What a beautiful representation and manifestation of patience that this plant is. And just knowing that whatever you have in your life right now that is that tiny small cutting that had really nice roots but was small, just know like with patience, you can have a full-blown, robust plant like this that's so beautiful and brings you so much joy. Can grow YouTube show. So I have currently about 64, give or take, plants in my collection. I had 160 I downsized to move out of my apartment in New York City, and now we're moving again, and the collection will likely grow again, but anyway. I've got 64 plants, and I was thinking about doing a video on what I'm gonna show you today, this hack, this like plant parent hack that I guess I've been doing for the last three years to grow my plants for free. And I just realized that I've used this practice so much that 35% of my plant collection has been completely free. So I just went around my room and counted 22 plants have been free cuttings that I've gotten and done what I'm about to show you. And now I have enormous plants, like six to eight inch pot plants that would be 50 to $100 in a plant shop that are free because of this process that I use and I can't wait to tell you about it, <laughs> holy moly. So yeah, I think a lot of us want to grow our plant collections. We wanna feel that indoor jungle feeling kind of encapsulated with plants. I hope you saw my restorative planty corner tour I did a couple weeks ago. This is it, but the setup is a little different so I can make a nice video for you. Um, but anyway, growing a collection is really expensive and if, I don't think I could ever have afforded full pots of the plants that I have in my collection now. Like, I don't think I could have afforded 64, six to eight inch pots of plants, but because I've been doing this process, I've got 64 plants and I had like 160 plants. And what's so interesting is also the act of taking a cutting and growing it and nurturing it into a larger plant. I have such a sweet emotional connection to so many of these plants that I don't think I would have had if I had just bought it in a store. Um, even though there are definitely been some plants in my collection that I've bought at stores and I've really loved, but it's this has just kind of been this really interesting um, realization that I've had about my collection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you this, this process that I do, but also I'm gonna show you some of the plants as proof of like what you can accomplish with just a little bit of patience and snippers and a glass of water. Um, so the process that I basically have been doing with all of the cuttings that I get, so I'm a huge cutting swapper. I love a plant swap. I love a virtual plant swap. During COVID, I've done four or five plant swaps with friends on the internet all over the country. Um, to think about low waste, you know, I've tried to upcycle packaging that I've already had and use, you know, biodegradable packing materials and all that. But it's been so fun to connect with people on the internet who are either listeners or just people that I've been following who I've admired and swap plants and like go back and forth on DMs. Like, what do you got? What do I have? What can we swap for? What's a fair trade? Um, so you get this plant. It can be as small as one tiny little leaf, which I will show you with another plant you can cultivate that plant so it's enormous. So the perfect example is going to be my very first Monstera. My very first Monstera, which is now this enormous plant, was four leaves. So you can check out the photo. This was a Monstera that I got at a Summer Rain Oaks plant swap in 2017. I went to the plant swap, it was the first swap. I didn't know anyone, it was so exciting. And I ended up swapping for this tiny cutting of this Monstera. Now, as you can see in the photo, that circle of those five leaves, those are right here, I think. No, those are right here. So they've grown up a little bit, but they've pretty much remained the same. But the way that this works is, when you have one cutting, find the nodes, chop off the top of the plant and then stick those nodes in water, let that root and then pot it in the same pot as the plant. So I had that tiny pot. It was much smaller than this one. This is I think an eight inch pot now. As soon as the plant would grow, no grew, grow new leaves, I would let the leaves establish and after it grew like three or four new nodes, I would cut below the node, remove the lower leaf, stick it in water and let it root. Um, 
I'm not going to give you a propagation tutorial because I feel like there are plenty of those on YouTube that you can go check out. If you want me to make you a propagation tutorial, please let me know in the link uh, in the comments below. But anyway, so slowly but surely, a little bit would grow. I would chop it, prop it, put it back in. A little bit would grow. I would chop that, prop it, put it back in. The other thing that that does is it signals to the plant to grow bushier. So you actually get more lateral, lateral growth when you do that. Now, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six stems that I propagated. So I I have the original stem and then five extra cuttings that I propagated in this plant. It's grown so big that it's climbing up a moss, hole, moss pole. And as you can see, we've got fenestrations. Look at that one. Look at that guy. Um, this was a very immature plant, so the fact that any of the leaves are fenestrated is beyond me because, you know, they're so um, juvenile. Um, but this plant is like so lush such big jungle vibes and it started as a tiny cutting so this process really works i think another great example is my monstera peru that i got from plant friend and youtuber nick paleggi we did a live taping of bloom and grow radio a year and a half ago at urban jungle philly and as a little treat he had a monstera peru he clipped off one leaf of the Monstera Peru, and you can see the photo of the leaf that I had propagating in a little cup in the Airbnb I was staying in. Um, and since then, I've nurtured this plant into quite a lot, quite a larger plant. It's grown rather prolifically. I didn't notice this yellow leaf though. I've got to chop that off. Um, and it's grown more stolons, more runners. So I'll probably propagate this again and pot it up. So I let the leaf do its thing. Um, he gave me a fresh cutting of the leaf. So for that situation, I put the leaf immediately in water. I was in Philadelphia. Then I actually had to bring that leaf in water back to New York and I stuck it in water and I forgot about it for probably a month. And it grew, I think nodes at like, it grew roots at two different nodes and I potted that plant in soil. Then it kind of adjusted to the soil. It didn't put off new growth for a while, but then slowly but surely it threw off one little leaf. And that the thing that's crazy about these Monstera Perus is the initial growth is tiny and then they grow into these epic leaves. I mean, this is a really fun plant to grow. I can't suggest it enough. So as I let it grow, I think it grew four or five nodes. I cut back four nodes, removed the bottom leaf off of that node, stuck that in water, and now I have, as you can see, two main uh, vines. What I think I'm gonna do now that I'm looking at this plant, this has enough nodes now, I'm gonna cut it here and root one, two, three, see what roots, pot it up again, and my goal is to get this guy probably into maybe a six inch pot, and then I'll start training the vines to maybe grow up because this is like such a wild, I mean, I freaking love this plant, but super easy and super simple. And that was a cutting that he didn't even root for me. He literally snipped it off his plant and gave it to me in a wet paper towel. And I've been able to grow it into this wild and wacky thing. And I'm getting a lot of new growth on this runner too. The even cooler thing is I got connected with this guy Joey on Instagram and Joey had an angel wing begonia and I really wanted that and he really wanted one of these. So I cut one leaf off of this guy, rooted it in water, and then I sent it to Joey. And then he recently sent me my first angel wing begonia, which has been growing like gangbusters. It got here with two leaves and it has six leaves already. And that's just from potting it in soil. So more to report on that later. Another plant I wanted to show you, and I know I talk about him all the time, but Raffi, my Raffidophora tetrasperma. <laughs> I love him so much. He's growing like gangbusters. I mean, look at that. And here's a crazy thing, but he grew a leaf with a fenestration. I'll do a close up for you. So the story about Raffi, this was probably two years ago and change. I put out a Monstera 101 episode, but on the Monstera 101 episode of Bloom and Grow Radio podcast, I said, my dream plant is Raphidophora tetrasperma, otherwise known as mini Monstera. A listener in Florida reached out to me, told me that she would root some cuttings of Raffi and share them with me. Oop, one of my grow lights just turned off. <laughs> That grow light, uh, that Soltech Solutions light is on a timer, timer and it just turned off. That's hilarious. Good night. Good night, Wybie. Talk to you later. 
Um, so Bethany said that she had a rooted Raphidophora tetrasperma cutting that she would send me. And this, the roots that this plant came in were amazing. So I put the unboxing on my Insta story and I wanna play the unboxing for you. It's 15 seconds long, but you can see how excited I was um, to get it. And also how small the plant was that has now turned into this epic plant. I have plant mail from a really special listener. Her name is Bethany and Oh my god, I'm so excited. I like the heart palpitations. Um, she wrapped these, she like individually wrapped each. Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> ah! So Rafi, I think, was like a tiny little, I mean, he was, I think maybe four stems, maybe six leaves, obviously so small. He came with a really established root system. I put him back in water. I let him establish a little bit. I potted him up in soil and he grew, we let actually him run before I propagated. He grew of this really long runner that actually climbed over Billy's desk, which we really liked back then. But then I started propagating him and I feel like since I've, whoop, I feel like since I've started propagating him, he's actually grown more vigorously. And the other thing I've noticed is when we've chopped him on the top, the nodes below where we chop him grow lateral growth. So he is definitely more bushy and hardy since I've been propagating him than when we started, which I think is really interesting. Um, on my Instagram story, and I will link to this video in the show notes because Leslie Halleck on Instagram Live literally took me step by step through propagating Rafi and we made a video about it. You can check that out if you want to learn how to like specifically propagate a Raphidophora tetrasperma or you can watch my YouTube video where I experimented propagating him in four different types of media. But she also encouraged me. I took some cuttings. I potted them right in the soil. I didn't root these cuttings in water. I just took the cutting, I stuck it right in the soil. It was like sad for two weeks as it was establishing. And then once it established, it's been very happy and putting off all sorts of new growth. Um, so once again, chop them at the top, root them in water or with a Raphidophora tetrasperma or a pothos or something that's really hardy, stick it right in the soil and fill the pot. Because I feel like with a lot of these running plants that we train at moss poles, then like this area looks kind of bald. So by doing that, you get nice bushy moments down here and then more wild moments up at the top. So that's Rafi. The last plant I wanna show you that was a tiny cutting that is now an epic plant that has getting that has been getting full and fuller and fuller is this Kalanchoe Copper Spoon. I didn't even know what this plant was when I first got it. Um, I got it at a plant swap that some plant friends were at and like one of them was like, oh yeah, this is a rare plant, like take this cutting. And I was like, whatever, I didn't even know what a Kalanchoe was. But it was a very tiny cutting, you can see in the photo. Um, but I put it in my windowsill and this thing is, I mean, I think it's kind of grown up out of this pot, um, but it grew. I chopped off the top, removed the, I didn't root this in water. I just removed the bottom leaves and then stuck it in the soil. It would grow. I would chop it off again, remove the bottom leaves, stick it in the soil. And now I've got this like really cool copper plant and I freaking love how it looks in a terracotta pot. Um, so this is just another example of with time, with patience, you too can have big plants for free. One other plant that I wanted to give a shout out. Now I will say I have done nothing to this plant besides receive it, but I was scrolling through my camera photos to try and find the original photo of Rafi and I saw the original photo of this plant that I got as a cutting. I cannot believe how small this cutting was and how large this plant is. And I think it just goes to show that if you can have patience like all of these plants bloom and grow, <laughs> watching these plants get bigger and bigger and just me scrolling through my phone today and seeing these, you know, two or three year old photos and remembering what I was like as a plant parent when I got it and how little I knew and how much I know now and how much I'm still learning. But this plant, um, it needs a water, honestly. So <laughs> it's looked better. Some of the leaves are a little curled. Um, anyway, I thought this was a prayer plant for a while. It's actually a Sinanthe, and I'm not gonna pronounce that correctly. Um, it was the tiniest cutting, and freaking look at this guy. 
the one thing I will say is I did not use what I the chop and pot, not chop and prop, but chop and pot um, technique. This guy just grew. Like this is such a vigorous grower. I can't believe how large this plant is coming from literally the tiniest cutting. Um, also in that photo, I thought it was so fun. I also got a, this cutting at a Summer Rain Oaks plant swap and I loved the little glass bottle that the plant parent gave to me with this plant in it and um, I still have it and I hope to use it and gift it to someone else one day. But anyway, what a beautiful representation and manifestation of patience that this plant is. And just knowing that whatever you have in your life right now that is that tiny small cutting that had really nice roots but was small, just know like with patience, you can have a full-blown robust plant like this that's so beautiful and brings you so much joy. So as I was doing some plant care maintenance today, I noticed that this plant I got during COVID in a plant swap with a friend, it's a Peperomia rubicola. She, thank God she wrote the name down because I keep forgetting. It's grown pretty prolifically since I've gotten it and it's grown these little runners, but it's in the tiniest little pot. So what I think I'm gonna do is chop these off, root them in water, um, and then pot them in a larger pot with the rest of the plants in hopes that I can start like establishing a little bit nicer of a larger plant. I know this is kind of a dwarf variety of um, peperomia and I'm cool keeping it in a small pot, but I think it would be fun to see if I could get it just like a little bushier and a little bigger before I start letting it trail. And I just loved the pink pot she sent because it's got these really beautiful red um, undersides of the leaves and stem. So this will be my next chop and prop and I'll keep you posted. If you're interested in seeing more of my cuttings, I have 22 of them. So if you're interested in seeing more cuttings that have turned into big plants and how I got them, how I, you know, if they came rooted, if they came unrooted, did I water them, water prop them, did I put them in my soil? Please let me know. I'm happy to make more videos like this. Um, but I just think this is so fun. And like I said, I look around my room every plant has a story. Like every plant is connected to like, man, I had just lost a job. I was feeling so down. This girl DM'd me, offered me this plant. She wanted a pilea. I rooted a pilea. I remember going to FedEx in the midst of like peak COVID in New York and like being terrified, but feeling amazing about like doing that. It was like the only thing I did that day, like the only thing I did outside that day. Um, safely, obviously, but I just, I remember that being such a fearful moment for me and connecting with the stranger and doing this gesture for each other just was really special. And now every time I look at this plant, I'll be able to think of that like moment of hope and light in a dark time. And I have those thoughts and feelings about so many of my plants. It's amazing because this has kind of been the, the cheap way that I've grown my collection. So reach out to someone you know, or maybe someone you don't know, maybe someone that you know on Instagram and see if they're interested in doing a plant swap. You don't have to be fancy. I did most of these swaps before I even had a podcast. Just ask, say, hey, I'm so interested in doing a plant swap with you. These are the plants that I could offer to take a cutting for you if you would be interested in giving me a cutting of that. Or just saying, hey, I love your collection. I'm looking to, you know, bring some variety to mine. Like, do you wanna do a swap? And then organize it. And the ways that you can swap is you could meet up in a park, you can meet up outdoors safely, distanced, locally. Um, I did a swap in Brooklyn where we actually met at a plant shop and we went into the plant shop to check the plants out and then met up outside and, and did our swap. Um, you can do them via the mail and pack your plants up via the mail, ship them to each other. I mean, I've shipped plants now to Baltimore, to Michigan, to... Um, Philly, all over the place. And I've gotten plants from California and Seattle as well. And also there's a lot of like local meetup groups that you can do plant swaps with. Um, and I've seen them kind of pivoting and doing outdoor meetups as well. So get in those local Facebook groups and say, hey, I wanna do a, a cutting swap. Let me know what you want, you know, 
hey, I've got this cutting for swaps, like who wants to swap with me? I see that happening all the time, especially in the Bloom and Grow Garden Club, which is, as I like to say, the plantiest quarter of the internet. So anyway, please let me know if you have a cutting with a special memory and how big it's gotten. I would love to hear about it um, in the comments below. Make sure to be a plant friend and like this video and subscribe for more upcoming planty content because I've got a lot coming your way. And until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Doom, 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 doom,